Hey guys, I finally got this. The newest version of the Trezor called the Trezor Model T. This is a premium version. This costs a whopping 149 euros. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through what's inside the box, how to get started if you have one of these. Then I'm gonna talk about my review for this device. Is it really worth $149 to buy one of these devices? And finally, I'm gonna compare it with something else as well. We've got the ledger over here and we got the keep key as well. So I'm gonna compare it against these other wallets to see if this is worth it or not. I'm gonna put the timestamps down below. So if you guys want to skip directly to the section you're interested, just go down, just check out the timestamps and just click directly into that to go to the section that you wanna see. Just make sure you read the instructions on how to set these up and I'm not responsible for any lost cryptocurrencies if you don't follow these instructions. Now let's get started with what's inside the box. So that my friends is the Trezor Model T. I do wanna say that there is a special Trezor safety seal. So all in all, you have a device itself, a holder, cables, your two recovery C key, pay piece of paper, some stickers, and the getting started guide. Now let's get started setting up. Now, this is the part you have to really pay attention because if you make a mistake here, it's possible, for example, if you accidentally take a photo of your backup security phrase, that you might leak your security key and you might end up losing your cryptocurrencies via hack. So this is the part where you want to make sure that you're in a very nicely secluded place, no video cameras next to you. I know I'm recording here, but that's because I'm just showing you guys how it's done. And you make sure that you don't take a photo of any part of this process because if you do, there's a risk of a security leak. And also it's absolutely important to not to disclose this key to anybody. Let's get started by breaking the seal on the actual device. Let's peel this off. Now you're ready to go. Plug in the USB type C. So this is the weird looking type C cable. And if you don't have any out of these, make sure you keep this cable safe. Otherwise, if you lose it, it's gonna be hard to access this. Boom, connect it inside and connect that up to the computer. Now that boots up, it's gonna show you the welcome screen on the Trezor itself. And on your computer, you're gonna go to their welcome site. On the Trezor site itself, you're gonna be graded with which Trezor do you have? Well, we're gonna here, we're gonna select the Model T. All right, gonna be graded with the beta interface. That's fine, it's a new one. It looks pretty awesome and sexy. And you're gonna click directly for check for devices. It's gonna open up a window here and you're gonna find the Trezor. So you should automatically find it on your, both your Windows or a Mac if you have it. So once you're connected here, you're gonna install the firmware. So you're gonna update the firmware first by clicking install. Your Trezor itself, it's gonna show you the uploading for firmware interface. So it's gonna show you a little window to anagraphics and animation to say, yeah, it's updating. Make sure at this point that you don't disconnect your device. Now that the firmware is updated, it's gonna restart and it's gonna ask you to go to the website again. And here, click again, check for devices. And for some reason here, we're gonna see the unknown devices from Interbiometrics. That's fine, just click it, it's your treasure. You wanna make sure you're clicking the create a new wallet button. I've heard of some scams where eBay sellers will ask you to restore a wallet, that's a scam. If you're the first time using this, create the new wallet and you're ready to go. So you can just click directly, continue, and you're actually ready to send or receive cryptocurrencies. But at this point, it's actually not backed up. And if you ever lose your device, that means it's game over, your coins are all gone, there's no way to recover it. So what you wanna do right now is you wanna create the backup in three minutes. So click the create the backup button here. Do not take a photo of your recovery seat. Do not write it on your computer. Do not save it onto cloud storage, never upload it online. And this is absolutely, absolutely important. I mean, a lot of people are lazy here and they feel, oh, maybe I can just copy paste these buttons and keys onto the computer. No, don't do that. And just click accept and continue. Now you're gonna continue with your Trezor. And this is the good part about the Trezor Model T because all the instructions are done on the device. So you don't actually have any interference from your PC because sometimes if your PC has a virus or has spyware, that can potentially compromise the whole process. So here you're doing everything on the device and just excluded from the PC. And here is the important part. You're gonna write down the recovery phrase and make sure that the order that you write it down is important. And this is on the piece of paper as well. 
So just make sure that the numbers match. It is absolutely important at this stage to make sure that you are not being filmed. No one's looking over your shoulder and you write down the words very clearly. The reason for this is this piece of paper, these words is used to restore your device if something goes wrong. Say for example, if your device malfunctions, then you have a backup and you can still recover your funds stored on the device. And now the device is going to ask me for a test to make sure that I got the words done. So on the interface, we have a keyboard here. I'm not sure if you can see that clearly. There you go. You can see the keyboard and you're going to use that to type in the words. So for example, it's asking for the fifth word right now and I have the fifth word written down, which is tragic. So I'm going to type that on the on-screen keyboard for the backup. The way the keyboard works is that you quick press when you want to use select the other letter. So for example, if I want to press the letter T, I will type this button twice very quickly. All right, now that I confirmed two of the words, it's now the setup is complete and it's asking me to enter a new pin. So this pin is for when you want to unlock the device and you want to make sure that it's only you who's using it. So say for example, someone gets access to it, they steal it, they still have to find out your pin in order to unlock your device. So here I'm gonna set up the key, make sure that the key is ready. All right, now that the treasure pin is in, I'm ready to use the device. So now that I set up my Trezor, I can start using it. And you can directly use multiple cryptocurrencies from the get through from the Quest Trezor wallet. So Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash. Just click into it and you're ready to use. Send, receive functions. Everything's pretty much there. Now, if you want to use Ethereum, you're going to use it with my Ether wallet or my crypto. And you can check out one of my guides on how to use that with the Trezor. But actually, it's really easy. So if you log into any of these websites, you can just click the Trezor wallet and unlock button and you're good to go. So having owned all three of these devices and been using them for a while, like the Ledger, the Trezor and the Kipi, which one's the best? And if you're getting started, which one should you buy? I definitely feel like if you're starting out, then the Ledger is the best choice. If you just want something small, it's cheap, it's affordable, it's 79 euros at this current point, and it has the most support for different cryptocurrencies. So for example, if you want to use a decentralized exchange, IDEX, it's already got support. Switchio has support for the Ledger. So it's a great entry device. It doesn't have any of these premium features like a touch screen and the screen is relatively small. So you're going to notice after using for a while it, the device for a while that, well, yeah, um, you can live with it, but it could be better. So now it comes to these two devices and these are a little bit more premium because they have a little bit bigger screen. And if you're paranoid like me, they display the full address. So for the longest time, I wanted to move to this device. You know, I have it and why not? Can I use all transactions on this device? And relatively, I think logging in is easier to use. They have a touch screen and after getting attuned to it, I just started using my little pinky to press it because the screen is still relatively small. Um, but the overall experience is that it's safe and it's smooth. The only issue when it comes to using this full time as my primary driver is the support for IDEX. I don't like I still use IDEX, I still use Switchio, and I still want the security of a hardware wallet. So at the end of the day, I'll be running around with both of these. So that's my two cents there. But that being said, if you don't use IDEX, I feel like this is a great solution for it. And um, this is going to be controversial, but this has USB Type-C and I really love it because my MacBook, it's just switched to Type-C. I have a Type-C to Type-C cable and it's much less flimsy than the Type-A, the normal USB on the Ledger. And I do want to say that I hate these Ledger, like these little connectors because I keep connecting in and out and after a time, the connection just wears down. And I've been noticing this recently on my Ledger that like I have really have to just like buy a new cable and shove it in. I'm always paranoid of just like breaking this and the Type-C fixes that problem. But that being said, of course, if you guys don't use a lot of Type-C, this is going to be a pain in the ass finding two different cables for it. So it really depends on what your current situation is and what you have set up. The Keep Key is very interesting as well. The Keep Key, it's got this giant screen, it has a luxury feel, but the only issue right now is currently I'm making this video in August is the support for ERC-20 tokens. So I trade a lot of ERC-20 tokens and this doesn't have full support. So there'll be like this occasional lapse 
of waiting for a support for this. So that's why I have it, but I don't use it for my primary driver. So conclusion, get this if you want to get started out. It's just great. It works for almost everything. And if you want a more premium device, the Trezor Model T is definitely there for you. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I'd love to hear your opinions on which device you use. Which one do you have? And do you use multiple of them? Do you keep them in different locations? And what's the funnest thing you can do with all of them? I'd love to hear them in your comments section below. If this video helped you, please do click the like button to like this video and the subscribe button as well to subscribe to this channel for more updates like this. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.